Watch out! Apollo Justice Ace Attorney is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB content rating system due to it featuring mild blood, suggestive themes, and violent references? Whatever those are. Oh well, viewer discretion is advised for this Let's Play series. Hey there, Marty! I'm Marty. Welcome back to Apollo Justice Ace Attorney, everybody. We're back to Pretentious Dude. Pretentious Dude? No, 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 that was oh, case 2-1. Oh, um, the exquisite. <laughs> Awful stupid. Wesley Stickler. <laughs> yeah, we're continuing with his text testimony. I feel like pretentious is more Richard Wellington from 2-1. Well, I mean, I this guy so. could work too. I throw around the roof pretentious. <laughs> as soon as the much. killer raised his pistol, I took action. Well then. So you saw a raised pistol. Weren't you frightened? It can be said that we students of Ivy University know no fear. The moment I saw that pistol, my inner sense of justice compelled me to take action. That was certainly brave of you. You might have gotten shot. Eh? Uh, you certainly were lucky. If I were the killer's shoes, if I were in the killer's <laughs> shoes, if I were the, if shoes. I were the killer's shoes, that would stink. If I were in the killer's shoes, I certainly wouldn't leave, have left a witness behind. He actually looks like he has no idea he was in danger. Regardless, I attempted to halt the bloodshed. <laughs> Cease this, this at once, once, you two, I cried, with composure. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are you sure both men were able to hear your voice? They were, of course. I wasn't talking this softly, I was like, Hey guys, bro! <laughs> <laughs> my high, exquisite voice echoed through the park. And the victim responded with that clarion call. I could only imagine him yell, like, if he can hear it through the park, it would have, like, a voice crack, like, Cease this at once! I'm the guardian of the park! Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Quite. The victim turned in the direction of my voice, and a shot ran out. Then wouldn't it have hit him? <laughs> <laughs> if he turns in the direction no, of the, the voice victim, and then the shot. The oh. victim turned, not oh. the defendant. I was like, the defendant wouldn't shoot <laughs> Did you hear the gunshot at the same time as the victim turned? Indeed. I would say about the same time, to be precise. And the victim didn't ask you for help? It could be said that he didn't have time to ask. He didn't even have time to take a single step. I'm totally sure that the killer fired because Mr. Stickler startled him. Don't say that too loud, Trucy, please. Well, upon our cowardly killer, the defendant appeared to have become frightened. <laughs> that he killed him? Can you describe the killer's actions more clearly? He seemed quite surprised, especially considering that it was he who did the deed. As we can see, human psychology is a tangled web indeed. Yeah. He simply couldn't believe what he had done. He shot, he panicked, a common tale, but true. Unfortunately, before I could take further action, tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. You didn't try to apprehend the criminal? It all happened so fast. I'm afraid I hadn't the time. Doesn't something about that strike you as odd, Apollo? What? The killer was in a hurry, right? He fired the pistol and tossed it right away. According to the testimony, that's what happened, yes. In that case, I'd expect to find something that we didn't find. Like- Find something? Find what? Like the pistol. I liked that contradiction. Kinda sad to see it go. Not as sad as I feel. What do we do now? At least the testimony's getting a little clearer. She's right! Maybe I can find something to use in this new testimony. Maybe I'll sound better once the Skittle taste is out of my mouth. Don't eat Skittles before <laughs> recording! Come on! I'm, um, yeah. Cease this, this at, at once. once. <laughs> That's probably my favorite. The victim, whereupon, tossing. <laughs> well, that would be the one that we're pressing, because we didn't get the gun until they were like, Here's the gun. Weapon left at the crime scene. But Two we didn't fired. see it there. That's because Clavier's like, Oh, pistol, better put it in my pocket. It's the safest place I know. I guess he Every went prosecutor. there. Yeah. We also didn't find the knife. That's no, that was found at the crime scene. Oh, uh, we didn't hear about the knife in the night? Um, we haven't heard anything from his testimony about the knife. Fing um, fingerprints were wiped on the pistol. Oh. There's no fingerprints at all on it? None. Pest. Blech. That's annoying. And also how? 
It's not like he fires, then he's like, better wipe off my ev the evidence, <laughs> and then runs off. Like, that's, <laughs> that's not happening. True. I think Gavin... Oh, okay. Wait a second! Another misleading request. Yet you're so beholden to your own mode of discourse, you can't see how it affects you. Um, come again? Wait a second, you say? A second? Are we intended to wait just that, a single second, one sixtieth of a minute? That's hardly enough time to draw a breath, let alone make a statement in court. Now, had you asked for a longer period of time, say three minutes, thirty-five seconds, that- Mr. Justice? Yes, Your Honor? Am I to understand that you are objecting to the length of a second? Yes! Uh, I mean, no! I- Here, just look at the pistol! It doesn't have a single fingerprint on it. Ah, uh, a common ploy made all the more common, I fear, by the prevalence of television. Criminals these days are loath to leave fingerprints. Wait, but you just said that the killer tossed the gun and ran! That's right! He didn't have time to wipe the gun for prints! Whoa, he has no eyes! Ah, the little girl sticking it to the university student. There's a song in there. I don't want to hear that song. I'm not little! <laughs> then let's think like adults, shall we, Fräulein? Huh? What if the killer, the defendant, was wearing gloves? Gotta admit, I didn't think of that, Apollo. Well, Mr. Justice? Could the killer have been wearing gloves? I guess. No way. Uh... <laughs> Wait, did we find gloves at the park in the trash can? Uh, no. What did we, we find? We found underwear. <laughs> no, I'm saying outside of the park, where it was like, oh, oh we picked up the mirror. The what else was the other uh, thing? A pair of slippers. Okay, it was slippers. I couldn't remember who. <laughs> Maybe we should wear shoes on our hands too. <laughs> I couldn't remember. Mm. If he was wearing gloves, there wouldn't be prints. Come on, Justice. You gotta come up with something. Is there something you want to tell the court, Mr. Justice? His silence speaks louder than words, Air Judge. He can think of nothing, Nine. I g guess he could have been wearing gloves. I guess. Then let's continue with the testimony, if you would. My pleasure, Your Honor. A small pleasure, but still. Oh, really? Oh, it goes back to the testimony after that? Huh. He's this at what? Okay, interesting. Well, so you'd have to present it again in order... <laughs> to do it right. Yeah. No way. The record of the murder weapon is very clear about one thing. The fingerprints were wiped, which means some trace of prints remained. Which contradicts your testimony. If everything happened as you say it did, he wouldn't have had time to wipe the pistol. That may be, but it does not change what I saw. The killer, the defendant, he threw down the murderous weapon from his hand and fled. Hmm. And this pistol was found at the scene of the crime, strongly suggesting that this was the weapon he disposed of. That sounds solid to me. Well, Air Forehead, any of your precious objections? What gives, Apollo? Let's see the voice training go to work! You know, I've only recently realized something. No matter how much you train your voice, it doesn't matter if you have nothing to say. What do you mean, nothing to say? Isn't it obvious from what the witness just said? Huh? Isn't what obvious? When he restated what he saw just now, he said he saw Walkie drop a murderous weapon. But that's not the same as being 100% sure of what Walkie threw away. You're right. Why did Trucy's mouth move there? You're right. <laughs> You're right. He's just confused because a pistol was found at the scene. Poor Mr. Stickler. It must be hard to be so perfect and yet so wrong. Well, it can be said that I'm quite offended. While it is indeed true that once in my youth I wrote a letter and I was seized by the teacher posted it, an appellation poor might be prefixed to the name. <laughs> um, I didn't hear all of that, but what we can be say for certain that the witness that saw the killer throw something. Does the defense have anything to say about this? Well, if what he threw wasn't a pistol... Then it had to be something else. At least one person on the defense team seems to be thinking. Ugh, I'll wipe that smile off your pretty face, Gavin. I like Gavin's nowhere near as mean as the other prosecutors are. 
He can, yeah. be, he can be a bit condescending at times, oh, yeah. but like also, he's not whipping people. He's not chucking coffee cups at people. Mm -hmm. He's not updating autopsy reports. He's not being like, there, this trial will end in three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and tasing people to take your evidence. Uh -huh. At least, not that we know of. Yes. Perhaps you can inform the court as to the nature of this something else. What did the killer throw away before fleeing the scene? He threw away... Trucy's underwear! <laughs> What the witness really saw was this, or uh, something like it. Penalty. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't even warrant a wisecrack, did it? Perhaps you'd like to try that again, Mr. Justice. Yeah, it's pretty obvious. It was. He threw away the mirror, didn't he? What the witness? There. Th th this. Uh, sorry, I couldn't say witness correctly. Oh. Why are you even a lawyer? <laughs> why would the vic why would the defendant have thrown away the mirror that broke off from? No, it, don't worry about it. Uh, the nail polish is coming off. You better clean that up. I, I'm going to. Don't worry. Okay. About it. I'm just putting it to the side for now. Um, I didn't. I'm like, are those your fingernails that you're breaking? <laughs> oh my no. God. Yeah, my fingernails are naturally like gold. No, I figured there, there was polish on them. I didn't realize the polish itself was that thick. Yeah, gel nails. Anyway, um... He threw... He threw away the noodle stand. <laughs> <laughs> he did throw away the bloopers, but he didn't... <laughs> Walk, he threw away his mom's underwear. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is weird. <laughs> that is pretty weird. Mm. The knife was found in its correct spot, right? We didn't, like, dig it out of a trash can, right? No, it was, like, stuck in the ground. Okay, so if he threw something away, would it be the gun? That's what they're saying he threw away. We're trying to prove it wasn't the gun. Oh. Um... Back. I don't know. Really? It's really obvious. Is that a sword? I saw one of those on the late night movie last night. Great, a sleep deprived judge. <laughs> this knife was found at the scene of the crime with the defendant's prints on it. His prints? This single piece of evidence proves two important things. One, that what the defendant threw while it down wasn't a pistol. Two, that the defendant wasn't wearing gloves. Hmm, indeed. Oh, air forehead. You're forgetting two other things you've just proven. Huh? One, that the man the witness saw was the defendant, Mr. Waki Kataki. Two, that the defendant was holding a knife with the intent of harming the victim. Oh. Hmm, indeed. Ugh, never underestimate a Gavin is the lesson here. This court is of the opinion that our witness is fond of making assumptions. In that light, I believe it would behoove us to hear ab about what really occurred. With less assuming, please. It is always the same with you people. Mark left the house on foot, and five minutes later his brother left after him. How long would it take for Mark's brother to catch up to him? Assuming that Mark never had to stop for a traffic light. <laughs> assuming. Yes, that's what I said. Assuming. As if that were a probable situation at all. Yet here you are assuming that my assumption is no better. Ahem. <clears throat> what this court assumes is that the witness will testify as to what happened after the shot was fired. Okay. Witness testimony from shot to call. Oh, that's that's a good testimony name, I've got to say. So, so, yeah. Some of them are good. I, they don't start getting really good until uh, close to the 3DS games, though. Okay. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene. Nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. No one. Why didn't you chase the killer? He was, as you say, a killer. Of course, I could have run him down, yet what would he have done when cornered? Sadly, it takes more than an aptitude for solving quadratic equations to know that. Wow. <laughs> okay, this guy's better than I remember. Hmm... Did the testimony earlier not prove the defendant's presence at the scene? And do we not also know that there was no one else there? It seems clear that we have our killer. Does it not? 
let's be fair. When was the last time you played this game? Were you like twelve? No, I was like fifteen or sixteen. Well, or something now like you that. know more quadratic but I've also, equations. <laughs> definitely, I've also seen two people LP this. So okay. Does it not, Mr. Justice? I better find a way to take this testimony down quick. Cool. I could not prevent the killer. <laughs> yes, that is true. Which way did the killer run? By that time, it was clear the killer had noticed me. Naturally, he ran in the opposite direction. That would mean he ran in the opposite direction from the Kataki Mansion. Achtun, don't even think about pointing out that he was going away from his home. All he had to do was loop back once he was out of sight. Ugh. How did he know that's where I was going? Why she keep... Didn't she say she thought he knew... She knew Stickler? Yeah. She did mention that. You were certainly composed for someone who had just witnessed a killing. If one is to devote one's life to the pursuit of science, one must never flinch at the sight of a little blood. Nor be so moved by a chemical discovery that one drops one's flask onto the lab room floor. Speaking from experience? Ooh, cool answer. Very cool. Hmm, so nothing strange about how he acted. Tracy looks like she has something to say. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Was your cell phone pink? Wasn't your first thought to call an ambulance? It can be said that I have dabbled in medicine. The injury I witnessed, namely a single shot to the head, tends to result in death. Ergo, there is no need for me to call an ambulance. Oh, a perfect syllogism, a proof in free parts. Exquisite, simply exquisite. Oh my god. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You're terrible. He actually looks like he's going to cry. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. Can you tell us in detail about these ten minutes? I stood in a state of heightened awareness. Anything could happen at any moment. Anyone could appear from any direction. Is that all? No one came. Nothing happened at all. I saw it all, which is to say... I saw nothing. It was late at night. It's not odd to think there would be a few, only few people around in the park. So we just stood there watching? Hmm, not much to go on there. Trucy, if you've got something to say, by all means say it. Ah, I can't find a single problem with that testimony. Had enough at last, air forehead? Maybe it's time to back off a bit. No. Yes. <laughs> Never back off. The defense still has some questions that demand answers, Your Honor. Hmm. Your opinion, Prosecutor Gavin? Oh, let him play attorney until he's satisfied, I say. I will amuse myself by composing my next smash hit in my head. Very well. You may continue with the cross-examination. And then you can present stuff. This witness is way too self-assured. There's gotta be a weakness somewhere in this testimony. So wait, if we keep walking through, is that going to keep happening? If we press the final statement, I think that'll keep happening. Do you see a contradiction around? Um... Keep going. No. No. That one, probably. <laughs> oh, yes. I definitely did this. <laughs> Nobody came by to dump underwear in the trash, apparently. <laughs> um, it could have been there before this stuff even happened. I guess. You know that's what Gavin would say, though. Mm -hmm. What proof is there that whoever threw the underwear away <laughs> threw it there, like, before the crime? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he couldn't prevent the killer from leaving. Right. Leaving in good conscience, whatever. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. Again. He has a cell phone, I think? We have heard or seen nothing of his cell phone. Show me your cell phone, creep. <laughs> well, now, that's rather rude. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know what to do. Or that. You have to back off, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> ah, there's nothing fishy about the testimony at all. It appears there are no objections to the witness's current testimony. There are any number of ways to explain the lack of prints on the pistol, I assure you. Perhaps the killer really was wearing gloves, which wiped the previous user's prints off. Then, after the deed was done, this fell out of his pocket as he was throwing the gun away. A mistake befitting of a small-time punk, in my opinion. No. No! It seems we've come to the end of the line here. No. That can't be all! How unfortunate. It seems that you weren't cut out to stand on the same stage as me. Were you, Air Forehead? I believe this brings the cross-examination to a close. This court will now declare a verdict for the defendant Walkie Kataki. Hold it! Nee! I'm guessing that's her. Yeah. What? T Trucy! Nobody move. W what's the meaning of this? Who are you? I didn't realize what was happening. There will be no verdict in this court. Not yet. Oh, the, uh, probably his dad's coming Wait, over. Wait, are you one of the Katakis? The Katakis? You mean the notorious gangsters whose son we're trying in the court <laughs> right now? <laughs> if you don't want to see me give the pretty little girl a new smile, do as I say. Adjourn the court for 20 minutes. W what Th This court will now bow to pressure from the likes of... Air Judge. I see little point in fervor aggravating this gentleman. Hmm. <clears throat> Recess 20 minutes, or I promise you, you'll regret it. Um... Wha wait How did he disappear so fast?! Bye-bye, Trucy. So long, Peggy G. Come to the defendant lobby, Apollo! I suppose I have no choice but to adjourn for a 20-minute recess. Bailiff, catch that mysterious man! Poor Bailiff. Oh, that happened earlier than I thought. You know what? For the first time ever, we're actually gonna go on through this to be continued. <laughs> yeah! That's awesome! Because that would be a sh too short of an episode otherwise. June 16th, 1117 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number two. Trucy! Trucy! Oh, is that still her? Yeah. I'm hoping. You move quick, Apollo! Good show! Good show! Trucy, you're okay. I, I thought. <laughs> <laughs> don't cry, Apollo. Uh, those good enough for nothing gangsters. There are some things you just don't do. I'm pressing charges. W wait, j just calm down, Apollo. Or else. Ah! <laughs> what, what the heck is that? Surprised? This is one of my best tricks. The amazing Mr. Hat. You look marvelous, darling. He's a big hit on stage at the Wonder Bar. Yes, I am a big hit. Ha 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 ha. Well, what do you think? Do you like it? You mean you... Trucy! There are some things you just don't do! I... I'm pressing charges! <laughs> Polo! Now's not the time to be threatening me! It's you who's being threatened here. Huh? Remember what you said to Walkie's father yesterday? You promised you'd save his son. But, but that testimony was rock solid. What are you suggesting I do? Look, once the judge declares a verdict, it's all over. If I can use my talent to stop that from happening, I will. Trucy, no more staged abductions, please. I'm not talking about magic, Apollo. I know what the witness isn't confident. I can perceive what he's feeling. It might not mean anything, but it's all we've got. You can see... What he's feeling? Think back, Apollo. Think back to the times when there was a contradiction in his testimony. All the times. All the times there was a contradiction? I remember. I don't remember. <laughs> All the times there was a contradiction. Um, actually, I don't remember them exactly. Good thing I do. There were two times when he made statements he wasn't confident in. And each time, there was a contradiction. In his hand he held... Yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Tossing the pistol aside, he fled from the scene. He said the man tossed aside a pistol, but it turned out he wasn't sure, and sure enough, there was a contradiction. Well, that's true, but how does that help us? Didn't you notice anything? Whenever he made a statement he wasn't confident in, 
he displayed a certain habit. In his hand he held, yes, a pistol. It was pointed at the man pulling the stand. Did you see it? The very moment he said the word pistol, his fingers got all tense and he fidgeted with the corner of the page in his book. How am I supposed to see that? <laughs> well, I could see it. How else do you think Daddy went seven years without losing a game of poker? What? What? I always sat next to Daddy during big matches. I could see what his opponents were feeling. You mean that's how Mr. Wright won all those games? It's not cheating, officially. I wasn't looking at their hands or anything. And I wasn't there all the time, either. Daddy's quite good at poker, after all. But not as good to go- uh, not good enough to go undefeated that long. Great! So he cheated! But where does- what does that do for us? I don't believe this. You have to listen to his testimony one more time. N no scratch that. You have to watch his testimony. Perceive the truth. Watch a testimony? Perceive the truth? The only thing I'm perceiving is that we're going to lose. Not true. Daddy said so. He said you have the power, Apollo. Mr. Wright said that? Watch the testimony. Perceive his true feelings? Is she serious? Time's up. Sorry, I can't think of any other way out of this one, Apollo. What was that she said before the trial started? Huh, Mr. Wright's not here today? He said his old foot injury was acting up. Yeah, he smiled when he said we'd be fine as long as you're there, Trucy. Is this what he meant by us being fine? Well, methods aside, she did avoid one guilty verdict already today. Time to show this court what I'm made of. Get ready for justice. Let's do it. Apollo. You know, I'm starting to think I can do this. I knew you could do it all along. Oh, one more thing. Hmm? Try to cover for Mr. Hat as best as you can. Okay, hang on. Watch Trucy's mouth as Mr. Hat talks. Uh -huh. I just flew in from the coast and boy are my arms tired. She moves her mouth ever so slightly when he talks. Oh, I couldn't even see it. I just saw her arm going up and down. I, thi I think that her mouth moves, like, just the tiniest little bit. Like, only a few pixels move, but it's, okay. it's a good touch. Great, right. <sighs> I love the animation of Mr. Hat coming out. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> June 16th, 11.40 a.m., District Court, courtroom number four. Court is now back in session. Right, we're fine! Ahem. I'd like to say to the young lady standing next to you, Mr. Justice. Oh, you mean me? Don't you have anything to report? Anything concerning the mysterious phantom in the silk top hat? Ah, right, him! Uh, don't worry about him! I settled that! <laughs> you settled that? Uh, yes, it was an, an out-of-court settlement! Right! Perhaps Fräulein would have us believe it was nothing more than a passing dream. A fantastic illusion. Now you see it, now you don't. Am I right? I think he's on to me. I wish he would stop being so... so cool. Let us dispense of these niceties and get straight to the matter. Let us dispel the mist. What What are your plans for our gifted witness? R right. Uh, the defense would like to request another cross-examination. Because... because I, I forgot to ask something. There was no issue with the witness's previous testimony. I will grant your request, however, but this court will not permit stalling for time. Understood, Your Honor. Don't forget, Apollo. When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. From shot to call. I could not prevent the killer from leaving the scene, nor could I simply leave the scene in good conscience. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. It's that one. Until the police arrived at the scene ten minutes later, I saw no one else. I wondered why I thought it would be the cell phone. I'm not sure I'm qualified to watch testimonies after all. Focus, Apollo. Find his weak spot. Focus. If only it were that easy. It's My super... ears hear what he says. My eyes see his expression. Do I have to do something more? Whatever senses do I have? What? What's this? My bracelet?
what's going on? My bracelet feels different somehow. I think Daddy was right. You can see it, can't you, Apollo? You're almost there. Find the weak spot in his testimony. I know this sounds crazy, but my bracelet is trying to tell me something. From shot to call. Alright, so you thought it was the cell phone one? Oh, yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Ergo, I used my cell phone to call the police. So, you called immediately after witnessing the murder? The police undoubtedly have a record of the call. Why not check with them? Wait, Apollo! This has to be it! Wait, you mean his habit? Don't forget, Apollo! When he isn't sure about something, he has a habit of fiddling with his book. The only time he ever even had the book open was here. Which means that this is the place to look for this habit. I... Don't know how I know, but I know. Know what? It's my bracelet. It's different somehow. I can feel it reacting to something about the witness. Your bracelet? I'm not sure I get this focus stuff you were talking about, Trucy. But I have a feeling that trusting my bracelet is the way to go. Okay, I just need to touch my bracelet as it reacts to the testimony. What's going on?! I can see the witness's face, his expression so clearly, it's filling my mind. I can see nothing else, hear nothing else. Apollo? Trucy, what's happening to me? This is what I meant by focusing. Focusing? In this state, you can see everything, Apollo. Everything the witness does. Th that's great, but this is kind of freaking me out. Just look for Mr. Stickler's, yeah, Mr. Stickler's twitch, his habit. You remember it, right? Sure, when he says something he's not sure of, he fiddles with a page on his book. You got it! Right now you're looking at the witness's face. And your eyes are sort of buggy now. That would be creepy to watch. I'll bet they are. First, move your focus of attention down to Mr. Stickler's hand. His hand? You know what to look for now, but you have to be looking at the right place. She's right. I can only see his face like this. Time to try changing my oh, viewpoint. Oh, I didn't even realize what the bottom screen looked like. Yeah. I just saw the eye. I didn't realize that it was moving around on his face. Rawr, rawr, rawr. That's weird. Ooh, I extend my pinky. <laughs> Perfect. Now you're really ready. Ready for what? Ready to perceive the truth behind the twitch. Perceive? Try listening to the witness talk as you focus. Then watch for his habit. Right. You mean when he fiddles with the page. That's right. That's your signal and look closer to proceed. Find his weak spot and I guarantee we'll be giving him a royal flush. <laughs> that sounded dirty. <laughs> Spoken like a true poker head's daughter. I'm a magician, thank you very much. So I have to pay attention to his words and his fingers. Yeah, so it'll be like, there'll be like different parts of the statement. And you have to like wait for the right one for him to start moving. Don't worry if you miss it. You can always try again. Right. Look out, nervous Twitch. Here comes justice. Ergo, I uh. used my cell phone. <laughs> Thanks, the I used my cell phone. To call the police. <laughs> yeah, I see what you're saying. We don't need to hear it again. Yeah, you actually do, because so... Yeah, now he's twitching it, now we hit proceed. Gotcha! You used the park phone instead! I... I saw it! Just now, I could see it! M Mr. Justice, do you have something to say? Uh, all this banging of desks! It's quite bad for my circulation, you know. <laughs> what? That how does that make any, any sense? sense? <laughs> I have bad circulation, that's not how that works. Mr. Stickler, allow me to ask you a simple question. Why did you fiddle with the page of your book just now? The very moment you mentioned your cell phone! What, what, what are you talking about? I'm curious now about the cell phone of yours. Mind if I ask a few questions? Hmm, what to ask, what to ask. Ask for his number. <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Mr. Stickler, tell me your phone number! <laughs> Why? What happened for? <laughs> He's just laughing up a storm. Why not? You have something against making friends. 
What does this witness's cell phone number have to do with the case? <laughs> Absolutely nothing! <laughs> this is a, an invasion of my privacy! Hmm... Seeing you grimace like that makes me wonder about your cell phone too. The witness will present his cell phone number to the court. Ah! No! <laughs> Trucy, do you have your cell phone? Sure do. Try dialing the number that he gives us. You want me to call Mr. Stickler's phone? <laughs> hey baby, you, you wanna hang out? I've never seen this before. This is all highly irregular. <laughs> hey, my pocket's ringing. Wait, this is the phone from yesterday. Look, a cell phone. Someone dropped it beneath the fi- the, the fire. <laughs> the fire! <laughs> Someone dropped it beneath the tire. If the car moved, it would be crushed for sure. Hmm, I wonder if it belongs to the doctor here. How strange, Mr. Stickler. <laughs> Did that work? Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my assistant's hand? Well, wait a minute, what's the mean? Okay, we can actually- We actually, like, I always ask to see his phone. That also gives you different stuff. I was wondering, can you tell me what model of phone you- cell phone you own? <laughs> why? Whatever for? Why not tell him? It's not some matter of national security, I'm sure. Nor does it have anything to do with this case. Take it to the lobby, gentlemen. Mr. Justice, our current market is flooded with generic brand cell phones. Please ask questions with a little regard for the market trends, please. <laughs> Who would have guessed the judge was up on his cell phone industry trends? Who would have guessed I'd get chewed out for asking a simple question? Uh, what the ask? <laughs> Mr. Stickler, please show me your cell phone! <laughs> Why? Whatever for? Show me and you'll find out. Well, well, I can't. I don't have it, you see. You don't have it? Mr. Stickler, is this your cell phone? No! Where did you get that? That's the phone from yesterday. Look, a cell phone. Oh, Someone we have to... dropped it beneath the fire. <laughs> beneath the fire. <laughs> In the middle of the night. Middle of the night. <laughs> How strange. Can you explain why your cell phone is sitting here in my hand at this very moment? Oh, wait a minute. That's a time paradox. It was in Dad Trucy's pocket in the other time. Why? That seems very strange. Also, I think that's where we're going to have to end this video Fine. for today. It's going a little over time, and I don't think he has any more testimonies. The rest of court is just like... Blech. It's just basically going back and forth and stuff, okay. presenting evidence. So, thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in next time for more fun with Wesley Stickler. Until we meet again, yeah. my friends, have a great day, and God bless.